Good morning. Happy Entrepreneur Diary Day. Uh, I didn't have a chance to do one of these last night. I'm trying to make sure I just make it sustainable. So I want to do it in the car. Or I want to do it when I have nothing going on and I'm waiting. Not that you guys aren't a priority, but you have to remember these diary vlogs um, are really something that I want to be able to look it back at and I wanna make sure it's sustainable so I don't stop doing it ever. Yesterday, a couple things happened. Uh, number one, I was really excited about this guy that I wanted us to hire. We talked for an hour and 40 minutes. We were gonna add him to the hardscape team. Drew could really use a helper, frankly. He could use someone that he can bounce ideas off of, he could work with, he can really work through jobs with and he just needs another experienced player on his team we've been looking this guy fell in our laps he's 20 years old he's been doing landscaping since he was 14 he's been a foreman for a very good company for four years and we met over at Oleo and talked for an hour and 40 minutes and it was great he shared a lot of the same beliefs I mean this isn't a bias thing, but I mean, I'm I'm a religious guy. I believe in a God, I'm Catholic. So usually I just think that maybe morals align more if someone's uh, wearing a cross and speaks a certain way and has a certain upbringing. We aligned, which was sweet. We really wanted to get him on board and invest in him. And he was currently making 27 at his old job, 27 an hour. So we're like, oh, we'll offer 28, even though he was hoping for 30, just because, I mean, we don't know for sure what his skill set is. We kind of need him to prove it a little bit. I text him the 28, and just, I got a response yesterday that was just, it was just, unfortunately, I cannot take this position, thanks. That was it, end of the conversation. I tried calling him, I haven't gotten a response yet. I'm still crossing my fingers that he's gonna give us a call back because I was hoping that it'd be more open dialogue. Like I would, I'd really like to talk to him again and say, hey, like what is the sticking point? Is it us as a company? If that's the case, then well, not a lot of arguments there. We are a good group of guys and we are a good company, but um, if you want something bigger, we are not there yet. We're getting bigger every single year, growing at 300%. So. Yeah, if the same point was money, and I'd love that conversation because obviously there is some wiggle room there potentially, or we'd have to build it in a way that he gets exactly what he wants maybe a month or two down the road with certain escalator clauses that um, allows him to prove his worth, and then it also forces us to pay him for his worth very quickly. So, I don't know, fingers crossed. I'm, I haven't heard from him. Uh, in the last 24 hours. I'm hoping he gets back to me today or maybe I can convince him to get back to me on the weekend. Got a few days until then, but yeah, because I really like someone like that. In other news, really need to get people to pay their bills sometimes. So for a business like ours, we can have to, I mean, we kind of have to pay out like quite a bit of cash in our scenario in the middle of the month. That's just how everything aligns for us. We have... I mean, especially like this month, so this is the end of second quarter. So we'll have a quarterly federal tax to pay. And that's like 16 grand or something. And then we have a Minnesota unemployment tax to pay, an Arizona unemployment tax to pay, um, an Arizona, I don't know, something else tax. And I can't remember what the, the fifth taxes for Minnesota, but lots of taxes, and that's a lot of cash that just leaves your account randomly in the middle of the month. And then somehow, just lucky us, it seems as if like payroll runs at that same time, so you lose 20,000 plus there. And then also, you know, we usually, for quite a few of our trucks, we end up getting terms on it. Uh, because we just want more cash and the reality of the situation is a truck should be an asset. So if we're paying 600 bucks a month for a truck, 
you sure hope that the only reason why you're buying that truck is because it generates more than 600 bucks a month in revenue. We usually buy it, uh, I get a loan for it. So it just so happens that I guess we buy most of our trucks in the middle of the month. So all of our payments for trucks come out in the middle of the month. So there's just this little week every single month where we're paying out 60 grand, 70 grand, and you're like, dang it. I don't like when that cash disappears like that. And then sometimes, I mean, we gotta do a better job of doing progress payments. We're horrible at it. We uh, seem to get sucked into jobs that have a lot of change orders, and they might go from $20,000 jobs to $40,000 jobs, and instead of making sure there's progress payments along the way, we just kind of forget about it, and we just wait until the very end, and then all of a sudden we're out 30 grand in cash, and we're just waiting on them to pay, and all of a sudden we've floated 30 grand of cash for a couple weeks and floated money out for payroll for those projects and yeah it's like dang so we do take deposits up front like right out of the gate we uh usually we take a deposit on materials if the materials are more than 50 percent of the project we just cap it at 50 but we really don't want to get caught uh paying for people's material and labor and then they don't pay their bill because that could put us in a spot especially on some of these big projects I mean we're at a point where it's like if we didn't get paid for a forty or fifty thousand dollar project at this point that's gonna hurt we're gonna be like oh crap we gotta figure some things out so definitely don't want to get us in a bind there but we also have to do a lot better job of doing the whole progress payment my allergies are brutal that's great it's july and i can't figure out why my allergies are so bad usually they're better by this time of year but i think it's because we're we're mowing or i've been i didn't even mow, i haven't even mowed yet this week i just mowed six days ago on a friday and my allergies are still bad so uh it's 4th of July this week. We actually gave our guys off uh, Monday and Wednesday, and Monday and Tuesday. So we're a couple days behind this week. Our mowing crew has gotten through all of Monday's route in just a couple of Tuesdays. So definitely not ideal. Brad, who's an absolute beast at mowing, uh, I think him and myself, we are gonna go out and try to run a route tomorrow. I'd say our typical crew gets through maybe 12 lawns a day. A good day would be 14. And I'm sure based on how things are looking, for us to be able to pick up everyone's slack, I think Brad and I will try to get through 22, 24 lawns tomorrow. But we'll see. We'll see where everyone gets. I'm, I'm gonna say it's like a guarantee. But yeah, I, I think I'm actually kind of excited for it because I think it's good for us to just prove to other lawn care guys how quick you can run. And the fact that we will run that quick and I guarantee we don't get a complaint. And that's, that's like a big thing because we get so many complaints from our lawn care and it's like the simplest thing which really bothers us. And maybe we just have a false perception of it being the simplest thing. I think that's what we are learning. But yeah, we just gotta, we gotta prove to them that we can do an A plus job and we can get, we can do about two and a half times the amount of lawns as they get through a day. So that's gonna be fun. I'm excited for that tomorrow. Yesterday I started implementing a, essentially uh, a three hour freeze in the middle of my day where I'm not answering phone calls, I'm not responding to emails, nothing so I can have dedicated time to get work done. That was nice, that was really nice to do. It was nice to also uh, prep everyone for that. So I text the whole team, you know, saying, hey, during this time I won't be able to talk. Um, and the other thing that I'm implementing is I'm checking with our managers at the beginning of the day and then I'm checking with them at the end of the day. So I'm just trying to do two touch points, kind of make sure we're on the same page about what we're trying to get done at the beginning of the day, and then just following up at the end of the day to see what went well, what didn't go well, 
I just want to kind of get that information aligned. I'd say it's for a quick note for all of you guys. We were we're trying to wrap up a bigger job right now, and so I I threw some guys over there with the original crew of three. I ended up sending another three guys that direction, and we did a debrief at the end of the day, and I talked to one of the managers, and one of the managers was like, I, I hated being there. It was such a nuisance, and it was a nuisance because things were just not running efficiently. I saw a lot of guys standing around. It didn't feel like we were organized. Maybe the crew lead was already organized for a team of three, but once we had a team of six, it just kind of fell apart. So that's my bad. I thought that I was helping by trying to wrap that project up and getting guys over there, but I actually might have made the situation worse. So make sure, this is a note to Bobo, make sure that you reach out to your managers ahead of time before making a decision to send more guys and make sure they really have that project under control and they have a plan in place to add the guys. So that's a big thing for me. I need to do better at that. So, all right. Well, that's that's another one. Another one bites the dust. So I will talk to you guys later. Hope you have a great day.